your victory over Usman was yeah. it more was it more impactful back then or now? No, back then, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, yeah, dude, one hundred percent. Back oh, why, then, why is that? Because people don't know about or like what happened during that fight. Like nobody knows what I was going through. Like everybody only knows, you know, one side of the story. And like, what side is that? You know, Kamaru's side. Right. You know? He did his podcast about about me one time. Uh, the little segment about me when Joe Rogan asked him about you know his only loss. Right. And. um you know, back then I was three and three. I was training an American top team. I just lost three fights in a row and he was my next fight. And I didn't want to lose. <clears throat> I didn't want to lose not in front of my brother, not in front of my mom, not in front of my unborn child and, you know, my baby mom back in the day. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, how are you doing? You know what I'm talking about. It's your motherfucking boy, Gamero, the Pharaoh, the poor man's Robert De Niro. You know what I'm talking about. Bald version of, you know what I'm saying? It's another beautiful Thursday uh, at midnight um, or Sunday if we're talking about real time. But you know what? What is time? Time is but an illusion. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's, oh, don't even get me started. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we are all so very ecstatic to bring you another story. You know what I'm saying? Uh, every Thursday at midnight on YouTube, more than anything, because you can check out the Spotify, you can check out uh, Apple Podcasts, all that good stuff. But more than anything, you got to check out the YouTube, because that's why we got 72 damn cameras running up in here. You know what I'm talking about? Um, and before we get to introducing the illustrious guest that we have before us. Ladies and gentlemen, behind the cameras, you know what I'm talking about? There's a man, there's a, a technical man. You know what I'm saying? This man right here, he keeps the cameras alive. He keeps them on, you know what I'm saying? He makes my editing uh, homework a little bit easier. Ladies and gentlemen, behind the cameras, we got Cruz in the hands. How's that? What's going on, Cruz? What's up, bro? Chilling here. Chilling? Chilling? Yeah, yeah. I'm digging the hoodie, brother. I'm Thank digging you, the bro. hoodie. Okay, okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I I know the, ch the the wheels are very, they're very soft, right? They're nice. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, um, how do I even introduce the, the man that I have uh, before me? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I am also very ecstatic, so excited, so honored to be able to say that we are uh, being joined on the Midnight in Miami set for the first time ever. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Jose, the Fresh Prince of Kendall, Caceres! Oh my God, Jose, brother. Thank you so much for dropping on by today. We appreciate it fondly. How is everything going on? You know what I'm saying? Before we get to, into the nitty gritty, before we get into the questions, um, how's everything going, man? Thank you so much, man. Everything oh. is going great. Thank you. Of course. Um, you know, I'm glad to be here. It was, Thank you um, for joining us. Yeah, man, you're welcome, bro. <laughs> I never done a podcast like this, you know. Okay. You know, okay. Being able to hear myself and stuff, so yeah, that, that reverb is a motherfucker. Yeah, it kind of puts myself on the spot, you know. <laughs> I know we were talking so much, a lot of you know, a lot of things earlier. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, we were talking. Yeah, we were talking a lot of shit before, and then the mics turned on. It's like, oh, oh, it's serious, you yeah, know. Yeah. It's serious. Um, <laughs> Jose, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, last week for our avid, uh, loyal listeners, we did have uh, Alex Bruce Leroy Caceres joining us um aka your brother um and today we have jose joining us a uh, a practitioner a professional mma fighter uh jose talk to us about the i guess the responsibility that comes along with that title man that responsibility was definitely a choice that i made so that i can you know just be able to be here for my family mm. Um, the responsibilities requires you to be in shape, right. you know, so you got to take care of yourself. You have to eat healthy, right? Requires you to have, you know, good mental health. Okay. You know, so practice your patience, 
you know, it's, this is a very challenging world that mm -hmm. we're living in. So we have to be able to, you know, manage the way we we go about. Right. What led you uh, to the path of MMA? How did it all get started? That's funny, man, because um, I just finished like, you know, making a post on Facebook. Right. That kind of ruffled some people's feathers. So okay. I got some people to talk to me. One of the guys that 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 responded to my post was um, the guy that choked me out to sleep back in middle school. Oh, shit. Yeah. Was it like a full circle moment? Um, no, not really. Not really. It's not a full circle moment, but it's just the fact that he like he just hit me up just to like talk his shit. Right. You know I mean, and I just all all I could do and think about was just, you know, for what he did to me, is what led me to who I am today. So yeah. I kind of just thanked him. Wow. Was was that like I, like I don't care what he said. If, like if it was offending me, he was just saying whatever he wanted. You guys can look at the post yourselves. But okay. I mean, like at the end of, at the end of the whole conversation, I was just like, dude, you know, doesn't matter what you say or what you think. I'm really happy that you have you're still on this earth, and you know mm -hmm. because of. You're you choking me out and pissing me off to want to join wrestling back in middle school. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today, man. Thank you. And the Damn. dude was just like he just said he gave me like a heart emoji and like with tears. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, and that's a full blown conversation by twenty twenty one standards. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so was so that was the moment. That was the catalyst that really uh, set aflame everything. That that's what led you to the gym for the first time. Yeah, that led me into just first just like going with through the the anxiety of like, you know, asking their wrestling coach if I can be a part of the team. And right. That was just like some that was like something huge for me back then. It was just like I now want to be a part of a team and make friends here and just learn something that I've never done before. And I remember doing my first techniques. I'm like, I like the fact that in the, now thinking back at it, I was like, I'm never going to learn this. You know, this is really hard to the point just by sticking through it every day. I ended up becoming like one of the better wrestlers. Mm. Um, do you feel that at, at what point did it transition from a thing of self-defense to something uh, more in the in the hobby realm and then to the more professional aspect of it? Mm, yeah, that's probably in my high school, high school wrestling career that that. uh that switch turned when um, I was like, okay, now that I know I'm tough and nobody's going to fuck with me anymore. Hell yeah. You know, like nobody. And, no, and like I did get into my fights in school and, you know, I had my success and, I, and I've had my L's. Right. But. Um, Haven't we all. But. Yeah, exactly. But I was still standing and I was still there. <clears throat> you know, that's just, that's all that mattered. I didn't quit. You know what I mean? Like while people were trying to beat me for my spot, I would always want to, you know, outwork them, outdo them, outdo myself who I was, you know. In the past. Right. Where does that drive uh, come from? Um, I don't know. I th it's just, I think we all have that drive. I think it's not that it comes from anywhere. It's like, it's always there. Mm. You know, like, it's just, now, how do I tap into that drive? Hmm. You know, that's like, I could, I could use so many different examples on how I can tap into that drive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Give me you one. Know? Give me one. You know, like it depends on the, the the stage of my life as well. You know what I mean? Like some people, when they first have their kid, you know, like they get that drive again. Mm. You know, for me, it was just, um, you know, I remember my my wrestling coach was also my football coach, and he was he the reason I got onto wrestling is because he kept me competitive on wanting to earn a Letterman's jacket. So like having like something prestige for memory or memorabilia was really important to me. And I did earn the wrestling, the wrestling letterman's jacket. Damn. And that to me was like the pinnacle of like my wrestling career. And right. And then I could, then I tried to go further in college and that's when I got mixed up more with mixed martial arts, mixed gotcha. martial artists as well in St. Louis. Okay. You know, I was already doing it down here in Miami, but like, you know, just like as a hobbyist, almost like kind of like just doing it because self-defense, you know, right, I, right, I want right. to keep expanding my knowledge, striking, Jiu-jitsu, you know, wrestling wasn't everything. Right. But, um, you know, I just, I'm just, I feel like I'm just tapping into my rhythm because I, I just now trust myself and know what I'm doing. Where, um, I guess, do you feel that the, uh, your roots in wrestling gave you an upper hand when you finally made the transition to MMA? Mm, yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like you know, there's those are some tough trainings. You know, and depending on who your coach was, you that can that can definitely build and help you discover who you are. You know, mm. breaking you down constantly and building you up and and just just teaching you the the fundamentals of discipline. The fundamentals of discipline. Do you think that that was uh, something difficult for you to be able to finally put under your tool belt? Uh, did you always have a certain sense of discipline or, or was it tough to come about? Uh, like Again, man, it's, it depends on the stage of my life, man. Like, some te- like it, it's like I can be disciplined whenever I want, mm. whenever I want to be disciplined. Talk to us about the differences in when you first started fighting, you know, your first fight. Talk to us about your first professional fight. Uh, And now having so many under your belt, what does it feel like when you, uh, you know, when you're, when you're about to fight now, where, where are the differences? Man, I'm going to just be very transparent with you, you know, about this because um, my first fight was literally out of the sheer fact that my brother got into the ultimate fighter. I just wanted to do it also okay you know i mean i just i guess i have that competitive nature that just wants to do things as well to prove that i can do it either good as you or better okay so that's why i did it first i mean because i didn't want my brother to come back home to tell me that like he's the fucking (laughs) pro fighter (laughs) when i got the opportunity to pro fight and they said that if, if i'm interested i said yeah too so, Gang, you know, so and it was just in that in the beginning, that's what it was about for me. You know, very shallow, very, you know, just thinking about me at the moment, just because it's fun, and that's at the moment. I, I mean, like, I can't, I'm not, I'm not sorry about that at right. all. Like, that's just a part of me, like, right? That selfishness. No, no, but it's it's honest and it's transparent, and that's refreshing, you know. Um, and and how how was that first fight experience for you? It was like a dream. It was like a dream. Like there was no other way to explain it. If I can just say it's like a dream because I remember selling tickets for the fight. Remember weighing in for the fight. I know. Remember getting my first professional license there. Damn. It was at it was at this nightclub that I used to party in. <laughs> you know, it was um, outdoor slash indoor okay. you know, type of um, event. <clears throat> and I had Masvidal and I had Juan Carlos and we were just and and Paulino. And I saw Manolo, and I saw Tigre, and I saw all these other Alexis Vila, all these other guys that like kind of like we just rode like this like this this train of like mixed martial arts throughout right. my whole career. And um, I remember stepping in that cage, and these guys are in my corner, you know, telling me what I expected them. You know, what I mean, like right. I knew what they were going to tell me because we've been drilling this and training this forever. But maybe I wasn't there skillfully, but I I really got. I got rocked like big okay. time in my first fight. And that's where that it felt like it was like a dream in the beginning. Like you're just there bouncing and you're trying to go in there. And you, I can't even judge distance. Well, my, I can't feel my own breath and my toes are slightly getting numb. And I'm like, oh, shit. am I even, am I really here right now? And you're just like breathing. And then when I finally got hit, it felt like freaking hot sauce inside my body. God. Yeah. It felt like I, either like, I, it felt like I was going to lose because the guy was freaking, you know, teeing off on my face when I was on the floor. <laughs> and then when I recovered with the takedown. Right. You know, then I, I was just like, oh, man, I'll, if I could survive this round, you know, I mean, I might have a chance. But this guy can't hit me like this again. Right. You know, and I started listening to my corners, you know, jab, 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 low kick, you know, circle and shit like that. You know, what I mean, oh, grab the wrist and stuff. And it, I just started listening just like I would did in wrestling, except like. At my heart rate at a very accelerated level and i felt like there was this heat in my body like i don't know wow. that's the way i can describe it I, I say heat because it just felt like almost like an electric shock wow and i was just in the mode my mom was there my friends were there you know like a lot of people were there my sponsors were there and like there was just something about like people being there that just kind of like helped a little bit but it wasn't the re it wasn't the reason i just know now that i'm just a tough motherfucker oh <laughs> i'm a tough motherfucker I'm just a tough bad motherfucker god man. damn that's fucking beautiful right there um so from you know the, we've had different fighters that talk to us about how you know when they first got started they weren't big on having people show up support whatever the case because it added to the nerves it seems like you did the complete opposite did it aid um did it aid you um and also kind of a, a second part to that question um how were you able to control those nerves 
All right, man. So, you know, selling tickets was a part of my job as a mixed martial artist. So I had to, I had sales experience already and I just had to figure out what was a product and I knew it was myself. Okay. And, you know, from what I was getting paid, I think it was like 800 in the beginning, you know, four and four to show up and then to win. The motivation to sell tickets was there because I wanted to make more money so that right. I can like ball. Hell yeah. Straight up. You know what I mean? And that, and I was, I, since I had sales experience, I mean, I would sell to my friends first, you know what I mean? And right. their friends will tell their friends. And then like, I just knew that mixed martial arts was already kind of like a label that people were getting, you know, familiar with. And UFC is a great brand or not, right. or any, and then, the, and then if you say you had local fights that you can watch live, I was just like pumping, you know, I, I, I drew a crowd. Right. And on top of that, my brother is a very huge help for that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? My brother's being a UFC fighter that's well ranked in the UFC and at the 145 division. He's, and he's well known, 10 year veteran or 11 year veteran. He's a freaking, he's a beast in the cage every time. Because of him, you know, I, mean, I know I get booked fights. I know I mm. sell. I know I sell tickets. Right, right. Um, do you are you opposed to training with your brother? Uh, do you guys train regularly? Um, talk to us about that. <laughs> Damn, because I know Alice is gonna hear all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, me and Alice, a little bit closer. Yeah, my bad, brother. Are you good? Me, me and Alice, we train. You know, like we're just brothers right. that are still working a lot of on on, I guess, on our own emotions in certain on certain topics. Right. We can we can both think that we're 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 both healed and better, but I know deep down inside that we're actually both hurting in something in some area that we don't really discuss at all. But we take it out on each other sometimes during sparring sessions or training sessions and. It's not like that we hate each other or anything or that what we want to hurt each other, but it's just we're brothers, man. Like some brothers train great together. I've seen it. I've seen you guys are an awesome pair of brothers right now. You <laughs> need to be able to like do this together. Like I just would like to do that and have that with my brother. So I'm trying to do things in myself. Maybe I need to change myself right. a little bit in order for it so that I can have be more suitable, mm. you know, it's for our relationship instead of like and I maybe and I'm trying to figure out what some of those things are, and mm -hmm. I, I think I'm I think I'm on it. You know what I mean? Like right. Well, the way we've been training lately has been great. I, honestly, we go to the same gym. We have the same coach, and when we do things, yeah, sometimes we we go out of hand, but it's it's I feel like it's worth it because, it um. It's only gonna make him better, right? When when you're getting ready for a fight, or vice versa, um, either your brother or somebody else at the gym, anybody's getting ready for a fight, but more particularly you. Um, at what percentage are you uh, going when you're sparring? Uh, you know, maybe two weeks, three weeks before. Are you going in there forty percent, fifty percent, seventy percent, eighty percent? What's happening? You know, like variations are happening. You know, okay. there's gonna be the time I'm gonna go, you know, a hundred percent. In sparring, on pad work. Okay, yeah, respect. Like pad work. Like I say, as we're getting closer to the fight. But let's say, oh yeah, let's over through. Let's say camp. I think about camp as well. You know, what I mean, like not only like as I get closer to the fight because the camp could be an eight week camp, and let's say the first four weeks I'm gonna be doing my hard sparring, and then I'm gonna start toning it down to the point to the point where it's like rehearsal. Right. You know, okay. to the point where it's like rehearsal. And that's like, you know, you can, if you want to gauge it with between you know, 100 and, you know, one, it's like maybe 20% closer to the end of the fight. Gotcha. Gotcha. What does your typical fight camp look like? And what, in what way does it differ from somebody else's? No, I don't think I do anything different than anybody here under the sun, dude. Like, okay. It's just, I just, I just um, tweak it, I guess, or let's say, Whatever is um, specific for me, you know, if I want to do more jujitsu for this camp, I'm going to do more jujitsu. If I'm going to do more striking, I'm going to do more striking for this camp. You know, if I have to do like a, a blend of both or tactics for this camp, because we're going against a certain guy, we're going to be going against doing certain techniques for this certain guy. Are you the type to uh, watch tape for a fight or do you let your coaches do that? No, we're all involved. We're all involved. We're all so, in it. So you're watching, you're watching your opponents. I'm watching it. They're watching it. We're all creating, mm. you know, we're all on, on one vision. And it's like, it's like a, 
ethereal connection. <laughs> Elaborate on that. Like we're we're not only connected. Um, I, I mean, like as we look at each other, excuse me, as we look at each other, we seem separate, you know, but there is like a connection that's, you can say bioelectrical or you can say ethereal, you can say spiritual. I mean, like, but there is something okay. where it's like intuitive, where like, you know what this guy's thinking, this guy knows what you're thinking by looking into their eyes, right? You can say you're reading the body language or you're, but then again, there's something that it's unexplainable. Like not everything is explained in this world. There's things that are happening in the unseen, mm. you know? To quote somebody like Joel Olstein. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, are you, in, in kind of branching off of that, uh, being able to tell, um, you know, kind of what someone is, is meaning behind the look, when you are mid-fight, um, are you the type to incorporate some sort of uh, code between you and your corner um, so the other person doesn't know what they're trying to tell you to throw? No, my brother's a master of that. Oh yeah, yeah, bro. My brother is not about like codes. It's just he just screams like the 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 stuff that like annoys the other fighter. <laughs> bro, hit him with a a comment hi. They're not gonna know what the fuck you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, but, we've, but I've done that in certain fights. I'm like, yo, let's let's come up with like a code name right. or something. Let's come up with like something like you know in between this fight. If you see this guy's doing this, say this in order for it to mean that. Like if you're saying low kick. Right. You know, I'm going to really do, throw like my jab low kick or some shit like that. Okay, damn. Does that make sense? So it's of like, course. You know I mean, like, yeah, you're the corner saying one thing, but I, if there's like, if it's like baseball, right? Like baseball codes, like the guy right. would be like, you know, you'll, you'll hear like maybe the whistle, but you didn't see the hand gesture. So right. Wow. Uh, and how much would you say of MMA is that sort of like chess game mentality? How much of that? Yeah. It depends on the fighter. Because mm. some people, it's like, that's because when you said chess game, when you think about that, it's like, how many people are good at chess? The guy that plays chess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if fighting is always a chess game to you, you're going to have more success because you're going to notice that there's repeating patterns. You're going to see that there's, you know, openings that, you know, he may not see because he's just going off of, like, let's say, sheer emotion or just at the heat of the moment. Mm. And if you ever played chess at the heat of the moment against somebody that has already planned, like, three moves ahead of you, don't you feel like you just, like... Are like the most terrible person in the world. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Wow. Um, for the people who have never watched one of your fights, how would you best describe your fighting style? It's like watching a giraffe slowly choke out its prey. <laughs> <laughs> That's damn beautiful, brother. <laughs> That's Thank freaking you. beautiful. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, every single week, you know what I'm talking about? We have three, I said three segments, you know what I'm talking about? And the first one is actually called ma, 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 Mail Time. You know what I'm talking about? And in this beautiful segment, uh, we ask our beautiful audience for a question that you yourself, you, yes, you, you, you yourself, you can submit uh, for the show and we will ask our illustrious guests. Uh, and here we we go with the first question. All right. <clears throat> what is the most painful injury you've endured? When my left knee got an abscess and it turned into like the size of a basketball, popping that abscess and then getting, then um, using antibiotics to you know, alleviate the pain and the process of healing was a very painful process. How long was that recovery? That was, that was literally a three month recovery. What? And I was training on it. You were training on it? Yeah, dude. I would wear like a knee brace and knee pad and, uh, was, and just do what I can. But were you still doing jujitsu? Um, yeah, I mean like certain ground techniques would be just doing like whatever. Right, right, right. You know, like side control stuff. Right, right, right. You know, mounted stuff. and God. Yeah. Good Lord. All right. Second question of our mail time segment. <clears throat> Jose, was your victory over Kamaru Usman more impactful back then or now? I know everybody's going to want to think that it's like, you know, I'm happy about it now. Or like, or impactful. What was the question? Yeah, uh, your victory over Usman was yeah. it more was it more impactful back then or now? No, back then, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, yeah, dude, one hundred percent. Back why, then, like, why is that? Because people don't know about our, like what happened during that fight. Like nobody knows what I was going through. Like everybody only knows 
you know, one side of the story and like, what side is that? You know, Kamaru's side. Right. You know, he did his podcast about about me one time, uh, the little segment about me, when Joe Rogan asked him about you know his only loss. Right. And um, you know, back then I was three and three. I was training an American Top Team. I just lost three fights in a row, and he was my next fight. And I didn't want to lose. <clears throat> I didn't want to lose. Not in front of my brother. Not in front of my mom. Not in front of my unborn child. And you know, my baby mom back in the day. God. I was literally working my ass off in the gym and I was kind of like, yeah, doing my own thing too. I wasn't, I was, I was doing the Mike, I was doing the Mike Perry. Right. The Mike Perry. You know what I mean? Like I was, except, you know, in my way. You right. Know, of I, was, course. I was, you know, I guess I was, I mean, I, I'm sorry. I was gym hopping and I was also training with different instructors in different arts like Tai Chi. Okay. So people thought I was kind of crazy. <laughs> doing this coming into my fight so it was kind of like a lost cause but you know I had my people that were in my corner you know the people that just you know it's family Still that, that's you. real family you know like my brother's family he's blood and right. there's other family that are that was in my corner that aren't blood right but it's the same thing it's just like they they rode with me no matter what even if they didn't believe in me I mean they, mm. they believed in me that day Dang. that day they did believe in me so, but I knew I believed in myself because what ended up happening was you know, in the way in, I finally got to meet Kamaru Usman, and I believe Yoel Romero was there. He just got here from Germany, okay. And he was kind of like giving me tips on like how to keep composed throughout the way in. And I was like, "All right," because he says that I I, I exert too much energy in the way in. So I was like, "All right, let me just practice keeping him composed." I saw my opponent walk in for the first time. It was Kamaru Usman with Rashad Evans? So. He, uh, like uh, my eyes were drawn to him because yeah Rashad Evans was next to him and he's like you know right an elite mixed martial arts fighter that I'm like dude I'm, I'm gonna get to be the UFC fighter like another like like a like a high profile UFC fighter and on top of that like my wrestling coach came in because he brought a fighter too from Missouri that was gonna showcase his in um in um CFA back in the day okay and then when I saw him I saw that he was there. Not only for his fighter, but also because he's there to root for Kamaru Usman. Oh. At least I made that in my head. Gotcha. You made that connection. <laughs> because I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm here to, I'm going to, I remember approaching him throughout the way and I was like very excited and I was like, hey man, you know, I'm going to fight too. I'm so glad you get to see me do what I do, you know what I mean? Like here in Miami because I went to St. Louis to wrestle. Okay. So I was, I was like excited. So whatever. I did the whole weigh in, the face off, the weigh in, you know, first the face off, then the weigh in. And I remember, like, you know, squaring up with him and just looking at him. But I was, like, the whole time, like, it wasn't like I wasn't even focused on who he was. I just knew he was, like, maybe 2-0 and or 1-0. and And he was, like, a dangerous striker. I didn't even know. I mean, I think I knew how much of a high-profile wrestler he was. But I, I wasn't scared of that because that's my background, too. Right. So I was just like, oh, he wrestles in college. Oh, I wrestled in college, too. Whatever. Right. I didn't care. So I was just like, I'm going to fight this guy. And I'm going to get paid. And I'm gonna like make sure I have enough money for when my daughter's born. And I'm gonna shut up my wrestling coach. <laughs> and I'm gonna impress Rashad Evans. Oof. So that's the stupid story I made in my head. Did right? it get it? Did it get intense at the uh, at the face off? I was having so much fun. Oh really, dude? I was having so much fun. I literally wore this this uh, this GSP, GSP style red headband, the number one headband through to the way in. Hell yeah. That my brother got for me in, in Japan, and um, I was just like, because it, it means I, it, it says I am number one, so I was, I was already like, you know, confident that I'm gonna beat this guy. Yeah. I already it was like mentally designed to beat this guy already. Those positive affirmations. Yeah, and I I, I came out like I remember they, they they call my name. I I I did everything positive, you know what I mean? I did right. breathing techniques, I did meditation, I clap for myself, you know, you know, I say I'm the best. Hell yeah. You know, I'd done that. And I was just like, and when I fought him, you know what I mean? Like, I looked at him. I just looked at his face. I looked at his ears. I looked at his eyes, his nose. I'm like, this guy's kind of like me. <laughs> <laughs> just a little shorter, but it's okay. You know, uh, we're going to we're gonna get through this. So I looked at, I, I wrote, I think Fallon Fox fought that night. 
Okay. Yeah, so I took pictures with with Fallon Fox. That was it's crazy because you know with all this whole like of course. transgender yeah. fighting. Yeah, yeah. That was that's been happening, dude. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Just, they, they keep being, making more noise about it, but like we've been doing that for like like a decade now. And, and Fallon Fox, she was actually at um at Alana's oh. fight. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was Damn. she was ringside for that. But okay, continue, continue. She was there. So yeah, and then I wrote the um, yeah. She was there, and I mean, that's just like something I just wanted to mention, but. But also, I remember writing the 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 amount of money I was gonna make at the end of the fight Dang. on my arm. That was also like a part of my motivation, right? Because I was like, this money is wasn't there even for me. It was for my daughter that's not even born, right? And like, I was willing to do whatever I had to do in that cage to get that sixteen hundred dollars. Mm, wow, that's after wow. paying out everybody. You know what I mean? Like everybody get their their, their cut. Their Not cut. saying that they pay me sixteen hundred dollars. I'm saying like I'm, when I right, right, my, right. Of my real cut. Right, right. You know, and I just did it. I did it for that, and I, I fought them. And like I didn't see nothing special. I'm like, okay, I fought six times. I'm like, I'm not gonna see nothing that I haven't seen, all except for maybe just feel his strength. Right. And you did know? you? And I did. Motherfucker was strong. Okay. Straight up. Strong and quick and quick. So he was like strong and quick. But I was just, I just felt like he made the wrong decision at the, at too early in the fight. And um, I was just, I just did what I'm good at. Did you feel? Jiu-jitsu. Oh, <laughs> damn. Um, was it almost like you were an, on autopilot or were you aware of everything that was going on? No, this time it didn't feel like a dream. You know what I mean? It really just felt like I was fighting my little brother <laughs> 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 while my brother was there cornering me. <laughs> but it just felt like I was going to fight Alex. And, and like Alex, you know what I mean? Like sometimes we put each other in those positions and we've come up with creative ways of getting out. And that was one of my creative ways as, as a, of escaping a mount position, you know, I practice a lot of yoga and right. do a lot of stretch, stretching and meditation. Right. So I do things that are just to some jujitsu practitioners, it's a bit unorthodox, but if you can do it, you can do it. Fuck, it works. Right. You know, and on top of that, with the, the other things I was learning with, like, you know, the guys in um, American Top Team with Ray and, um, and Manolo, you know, I was trying their shit too. Right. Wow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, every single uh, week we have, uh, th you know, three segments. And uh, in our first one, we do have one final question left, which is, <clears throat> Jose, your favorite fight. What is it? Both as a spectator and as a competitor. Hmm. My favorite, like the, the specific fight? Yeah, both. That, uh, one that you've watched that's your favorite and then one that you were actually a part oh, of. All right, all right, all right. One that I watched that's my favorite. You know, I remember watching this one with my brother. Okay. You know, this, this is a pretty memorable fight. It was, it was the fight with Lyoto Machida versus John Jones. Oh, what a fight. That was a scary fight for me. I, I mean, I didn't want John Jones to lose. Okay. And our brother would wanted Leota Mashida to win. <laughs> you know, and it was just kind of like, you know, like he and we were. I remember just it's just the shit talking right before the whole event happened. I mean, of the course. whole fight happened right there at the ale house, and just like saying that, like what he's gonna do and what's gonna happen and blah blah blah. And then when I and like I know that John Jones is very similar to me. Like we have we share very similar experiences. So I kind of relate with him a lot more. Because like he comes from college wrestling background, he's young, you know what I mean, African American, right? And um, and you could just just see that like he's he's has like a style that like I relate with, you right, know right, right. I, that I relate with. And um, when John Jones got him in that guillotine, that standing guillotine, Ugh. you know, I think he even I think he he landed, he pieced him up a little bit. Yeah, can't remember the fight clearly like that but i do remember him getting him in that guillotine and that high elbow over the fucking shoulder just when he let him go and he slept him and he walked away insane it was it was just like it was like damn damn is right damn. that's for the skinny people out there. <laughs> <laughs> god and then your favorite fart uh fart fight that you were a part of well my favorite fight was in Titan FC against Rami Hamed. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's my favorite fight. Like, just because, like, I, I felt like 
I was at a, I had a great training camp, and on top of that, I was I was um, taking a risk against a guy that was a high profile mixed martial arts fighter. Okay. Up and coming with you know with incredible striking, he knocks everybody out like within the first round. I really was scared, you know. And on top of that, I was really. Did I say I was? Did I? Did I? I don't know. I, mean, I might have contradicted myself, but I mean, I have to say that yeah, I was. I got prepared for that. Okay. I was scared enough to get prepared for that to develop that confidence to step into the cage mm. against a guy that could possibly knock me out. Mm. And when I was like, you know, trading with him, you know, like he helped me get better at that moment. You know, like about kicking, about di- di- timing my 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 distance and my management, my, my space management and everything. Like the way he was striking kind of taught me how to be a better striker. They say certain fights uh, that you learn a, a tremendous amount through certain fights. And it sounds like that was one of those. Yeah. Wow. Because it happened because we, the first fight, the first time we met up, cause we had to fight twice. I kicked him in the balls mm. and apparently I broke his cup. Oh fuck. Yeah. God. Apparently, and then he, and then they checked him inside the cage and everything. And That's he, why you need a damn diamond cup. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're trying to get that sponsorship. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I kicked him in the dick, bro, and broke his cup. And apparently, he said that like his dick was bleeding a little bit. Oh, f- he told me that backstage, fuck. and I felt bad, and I was like, "Fuck, my bad, bro." You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna control my weapons better. So then we met up again. That's what I'm saying. I got better. Mm-hmm. I was able to manage my control of. What I'm using my kick in my in my fight with a guy that that's gonna try to only punch and kick me too. Mm. But granted, like you, like the grappling exchanges were, were fair, but you know I just felt like I had the upper hand. Have you been on the opposing end of a uh, a cup shot? No. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, no. There you go. Knock on. You know what I'm saying? Knock no, on. of course. Yeah, go ahead. No, I paid my dues early on, bro. Respect, respect. I paid my dues. I got. I, I used to get kicked in the dick just to be someone of his friend in elementary. <laughs> <laughs> How much uh, thought do you put behind the the choice of music before you go out? Man, dude, that is such an important question for all the fighters out there that are listening right now, and anybody that's, that's thinking about fighting. Let me just tell you right now. Fuck. Music. What you trying to come out to silence? No, it's not about like it's like don't make it important, bro. Okay. Don't make that about your fight. I used to do that. You would it would be this it, massive it, it, it thing. had to be this massive thing. Like I had to be like, oh I have to have the perfect song to walk out to. Come on, how gay does that sound? <laughs> come on, bro. It sounds fucking gay. Bro. <laughs> No offense to all the homosexuals out there. Yeah, I have yeah, yeah. a love for you. Respect, respect. You know I mean, I say gay in a way of like I don't know, the way I grew up in this ignorant world where it's like, it means to be like uncool. Right, right, right. But you guys are cool. Mad cool. Fuck. Mad cool. <laughs> Mad you're cool. cool. You're cool. You're cool. Yes. Um, so so I, I, after that, you never really put any weight to the, you know, to the song, to the walkout music at all? No, yeah. It used to be in the beginning, like I used to have, to have the perfect song and then it eventually became like, I was like, why am I even doing this anymore? Like, does it even matter? Like, nobody's going to remember the song I walked out to. It hypes me up. But I'm, I'm better off putting on headsets and listening to what I wanted to listen to all the way up to the walkout. And I could just walk out to whatever the DJ wants to play. Mm. You know what I mean? It could be Britney Spears. It could be whatever you want, bro. Oh, like, that's a banger right there, You know what I'm saying? It could be slow music. It could be whatever Dang. you want. Because you know what? I've experienced that. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, you're going to be fighting in that silence anyways. Okay. Bro, I'll walk out to a thousand miles. All you're gonna hear is this. You're gonna hear the two little woods clapping and the bell. Ding. Yeah. And and the other guy, you know, screaming and shuffling of feet. You better if you wanna be, you know, in the rhythm of shit, get used to listening to people shuffle their feet when you're sparring them. Oh. Damn. And that's the attention to detail that only experience gives you, I feel. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like you can't substitute experience. Do you feel that that's your strongest weapon? No. What is it? My strongest weapon is that when I have something willing to fight for and I'm prepared to die, you can't stop me. Damn. Damn. I thought about this over and over again. Even when I would fight and have, you know, great success. I remember at the root of like, I'm not trying to be cool or anything. Like I was ready to die. You could say maybe I was a little depressed. You could say whatever you want, but 
it was like a, in a positive way. You see what I'm saying? Well, I, 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 I turned it into a positive. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not ready to die because I got nothing else to live for. No, I'm ready to die because, you know what I mean? Like somebody can live through me or like could live because of me. Mm. Uh, Jose, you have uh, such an extensive resume. Uh, do you feel a, a sense of pride in knowing that you've gone up against the likes of uh, Kumaru Usman, Colby Covington? You know, it, it seems like you're not the type of person, you know, to turn down a difficult fight. Um, you know, you'll face that shit head on, you know. Uh, talk to us uh, about that. Do you, do you have a sense of pride in knowing that? Yes. Yes, man. I have a. I'm very prideful about that fact that I did fight the number one and the champion mm. in this world in this lifetime. Mm. I fucking that's on my tombstone. Dang. That's it. Like I don't give a fuck what anybody says. You can tell me whatever the fuck you want. You can say get vaccinated. You can tell me to wear a mask. You can say whatever the fuck you want. At the end of the day, you haven't done the shit that I done. Mm. You didn't face the shit that I faced. And you'll never will because I'm only one of a kind. Gang, bro. Y'all here inspiring me, man. So what What the fuck gets you out of, you know, those days that you want to just chill in bed and, 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 I don't know, lay back and watch whatever the case, you know. Uh, we'll go down a damn conspiracy hole on YouTube, you know what I'm saying, for hours. What, what gets you out of bed the days that you want to, you know, sit back and relax? What gets you to the gym? What gets you um, to put that work in, man? Man, you know, it could be it's it is multiple of things. But let's go to the essence and the core of things. Yeah, let's do it. Because once you sign on that dotted line and that shit is scaring the fuck out of you, it's that fear, man. It's that fear that gets me motivated because, you know, I wasn't going to the gym as frequently until I knew I was gonna get into a fight. Mm. You know? Sometimes that could be the downfall. You should always be prepared, but it's like, I've been training for 11 years straight, nonstop. Like I, I, there's no, I don't have breaks. There's nothing, there's no like, oh, Jose takes a vacation from the gym. Mm. You know what I mean? I started recently doing this because I started noticing that like some of the best fighters in the world don't have to have like, you know, the best physiques and they probably get good rest and rest is a part of the fucking process. Yeah, what role does uh, recovery play for you? It's half and half now, bro. Oh, wow. Yeah, dude. This, there's going to be a time, yeah, I'm going to probably make it like have to be 70, 30 recovery and then work. But as of right now and as of lately, it's been half and half. Like if I train hard as fuck, I'm going to take the break as equally hard as fuck. Mm. That's very important. Did it take you a long time to find that balance? I'm a burnout, bro. I burn out. You know, I burned out at jobs. I burned out in, in training. I burned out in train and like in, in, in work. I mean, I burned out before, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so burning out is a real thing. You can burn yourself out in anything that you do. Let's say if you were doing a podcast every fucking week instead of doing right. whatever the fuck you wanted it, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And you're not in your own, you're your own boss. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not going to burn out. You're going to be able to do this shit with longevity. Right, right, right. For sure. Ladies and gentlemen, every single week, you know what I'm talking about? We have three. I said three segments. Uh, and the second one is actually the ma, ma, ma movie review of the week. You know what I'm talking about? In this beautiful segment, we ask our illustrious guest for a suggestion, a recommendation. You know what I'm talking about? I'm a, a movie, a TV show. We've had uh, Sarah J suggest adult films. We had a uh, video game developer suggest a video game. We've had all sorts of good stuff around here. So if it's uh, even a damn album, uh, you know, a TV show, a series, whatever it may be, something that ideally would be five out of five stars what would it be? Let's say you got boom, ten thousand people in front of you. They're you know they're they're waiting to watch your fight, you know, because you're about to boom, you're about to knock someone out, and they got two hours to kill, and they got you know they're on their phone, they're on Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, whatever, all the you know all the platforms, you know, we'll get a sponsorship yeah. out of anywhere. What would you recommend the most? Hold on, bro, I gotta look at the title. Could okay. you guys give me? Okay, a, of course, a man. Uh, bro, I do a damn filibuster in here for like three hours, so that's not even. Hold uh, on, look, uh, I got uh, the, an issue. Let me pull up the Netflix you know app right here. Pull up that Netflix app, and we'll get that title going. 
because um, I love me a, uh, a good title, yes. you know. Um, and you, I know I think okay, I think Cruz also has a, a movie recommended. Is it a movie or a TV show? It's a show. Okay, it's a show. TV show. What oh is it? shit! The it's a uh, it's a driving anime show uh, mm. based on cars. Okay. First time watching it, and uh, it's called Initial D. It's basically Initial like uh, this, D? yeah, and, and it, like it's basically a Tokyo like drifting, like Ooh. Tokyo drift type stuff. I like that already, and it's wow. super cool. It's super grounded. It gets super technical. And, uh, super grounded. I like the terminology. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I just really like it. Okay. All right. Yeah. How many stars would he give it out of five? Four. That's a hard critic right there. All right. That was beautiful. Four stars. Four stars. And you said hard D? Initial D. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I got my mind in the gutter. Okay. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right. Let me see. Um, I want to see if I can like... Okay. There's two volumes. All right. Cool. All right. I think we, I think we found it. Yes. I okay. recommend this for everybody. Everybody. You know, because it's um, it's one of those, you know, Netflix original Netflix series Gang. that um, that really animates just very um, sci-fi topics that we can relate with in today's world. Okay, it's called Love, Death Plus Robots. Yes. Uh, okay, we've we've heard. Okay, okay. You've heard of this? I've heard of it. I haven't watched it. Oh yet. man, I I literally like binged it, bro. Like, yeah. It's just like you watch one episode and you're gonna want to watch it again, and then you, if let's say if you're smoking and you're just chilling Respect. or drinking. You know what I mean? Like you're just gonna be you're gonna be tripping. You know what I mean? If you're about like, especially with the way that things are going on today and the way they depict things in the in the show, you're gonna make it's gonna be some it's it's scary, yet um, it intrigues the mind. Ooh, yeah. Love, death, and robots. And how many stars would you give it out of five? No, it's a five for five. Bro. Ooh, yeah. a fiver. Okay, five. all right. Damn. I, I think there's like. 15 episodes, something like that, 17 episodes, and um, they're, they're not, they're relatively short, you know what I mean? They're like short right. films. Right. Some of them are animated and like at a very, very good quality and with different, and they're all like different artists. Oh my God. So I enjoy, I enjoy variety. I enjoy watching okay. different things that like sometimes I, I have movies too that I can recommend too, but. Um, Shoot one out there if you want. Huh? Shoot one out there if you want. Go ahead. All right, dude. Because you know what I mean? Like I love recommending movies to young kids okay right and i'm glad that they're remaking the matrix but that's not the one i'm gonna recommend <laughs> you know what i'm saying like there's other movies people got to see before that's that shit much. disappears right you know what i'm saying and that's gonna have to be demolition man oh damn all so right if you guys are young demolition and man. you know want to watch a good action movie that's like just like just one of the best right you know it has some great actors and has a great theme and a great um story just demolition man also total recall with arnold schwarzenegger damn all right how many stars they they remade that movie but the original the original okay okay the arnold version yeah how many stars would he give it no, those are my five star picks. Those you know are all, what I mean? like, okay, it's like, it's like, if I'm showing you my Pokemon, yeah, you know, yes, I'm yes. only showing you my my holographics, which I don't own anymore. Hell don't yeah, have, bro! I don't have any more Pokemon. <laughs> I'm all about that Yu-Gi-Oh now, bro. If you got a bro, if you got an original Charizard in your collection, bro, that's a damn house right there, yeah. right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, amazing suggestions, phenomenal recommendations. We thank you for that, Jose. Um. You're welcome. La- <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I do want to know one thing that I do want to get into. Jose, what is your uh, your diet regimen like? Uh, you know, what's what does your diet normally consist of? Does it change drastically when you're in fight camp or weight cutting? Talk to us about that a little bit. Mm. Man, you know, I like to think that I'm in um, survival mode always. Gang. You know, so it's like I eat whatever I want and what I can, mm. but I just know what I put in. I'm going to have to work it out. And on top of that, it's like I also practice fasting. You know, it doesn't mean to like not eat and not to, you know, not to eat nothing and just breathe. No, like fasting can be in all kinds of levels. You can fast in everything, you know, fast from just soda. You still have everything else. You know what I mean, you can just fast from just, right. you know, let's say alcohol. meats or an alcohol. Yeah. You can fast from negative thinking. You know what I mean? You can. There's so many different ways of fasting, but I definitely do feel like that long periods, the more the longer periods that I don't eat, my body's doing more benefit 
to like, let's say longevity and health and recovery to when I'm eating a lot of food all the time. Mm. So, but when I do eat, I do eat a good amount of food and I try to eat variations. You know, I eat, I do eat consciously and healthy. Okay. You know, I, but you know, I'm not a vegan. Okay. You know I mean, I, I do practice, try to practice some of the ways they eat by picking a lot of their products, but you know, I, there's nothing, I, I, like I said, I'm a survivor. Okay. We're all surviving out here. You know what I mean? Mm. You got to eat what you can. Right. And you got to make with what you, with what you got, you know? So not everybody can eat the way certain people eat. And right. I don't want to recommend diets because I don't really like want to call anything a diet. It's more, more like, like a lifestyle. It's like a lifestyle. Right. Yeah. Diet is a like diet lifestyle. You know what I mean? You can, there's probably going to be a brand out there, <laughs> but, um, but it's like, what else could you do? You know what I mean? You could just only eat what you can and then make sure you work out. But I see like, for example, when I, my coworkers, you know what I mean? They just eat, 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 but their output is probably so little, mm. but you know what I mean? Like my dedication is different. You know what I mean? My, my discipline is different. I can go home instead of like not do shit. I'm going to make my body do some shit. You know what I mean? And then I'm going to just continually eat whether I go to the gym or work out at my house or do something physical, go out for a run or a bike ride. Right. You know, just, so, so if you are going to have some sort of, uh, so that's why, like, that's why I'm just trying to say, that's why I'm in shape. You know? Yeah. If you're going to have some sort of, I guess, uh, Liberty, I don't know, chocolate cake, are you going to double up on cardio the next day or something like that? No, no. I'm going to just, oh man, if I let, man, you know, it's put, what you put in is what you put out. What else are you going to do? You mean that you have no choice? Mm. Like if I did double up on chocolate cake, yeah, I'm going to have to do it. Is it beneficial? No, that actually works against me. So I shouldn't do that. Mm. That's not, that's not conscious eating. Smart. Right? So I do try to eat consciously. That's what I mean. Like I can eat my chocolate cake, but it's not going to, not the fuck that I'm like, I'm not going to eat like 13,000 calories. Of, <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Of you course. know, of that chocolate cake. Right. I'm going to just have the chocolate cake. Well, even though some, some don't, don't eat it. You're, you're falling for, right. you know, for desire. And it's like, okay, you're right, but I want to eat it now. So, but we can all talk about that psychologic and that can go so deep, mm. you know what I mean? But maybe for another show. <laughs> got you, got you. And then what about, uh, talk to us about the mental toll that weight cutting has, uh, you know, on a fight right before the fight. Talk to us about that. Oh man. After I just heard Joe Rogan talk about that weight cutting is basically legalized cheating, it started like it really dawned on me because I fought at 155 and making welterweight was no fucking joke. You know what I'm saying? Losing 20, 15 pounds, 30 pounds is fucking hard, dude. God. And it's like it is, that, that's it like is. a fight. That's like a fight in itself. You know what I mean? If there was a fucking sport called weight cutting, <laughs> my nigga. No, I'm the champ. No, no, no. Anthony Rumble Johnson would be the champ because that guy would make. Oh my god! Make, yeah, yeah, that guy would make. Dude. I met him live like several times, and I seen his body like you know Oprah. And I meaning, also meaning fluctuate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I also you got to give it up uh, for your boy Masvidal. He had that crazy weight cut before uh, Usman. Yep. Crazy yep, yep. weight cut. Yep, I know. I know. God. He had a freaking. That's a harsh weight cut as well, but he did it though. He did it. He did it. You know, and fought a three, five, a five round fight. That's insane, man. Insane. But then that that, to, that goes to, to tell you something. Body fat is super essential in fighting. Ooh. Body fat is one of the essential oils you're gonna probably need while you're fighting due to the adrenaline that is pumping through your body. Damn. But you don't think it takes away from your cardio? I mean, you your cardio is gonna be whatever you built it up to, whatever your road work is. You know, what I mean, true, whatever true. you whatever you built it up to. So can, will the adrenaline affect your cardio very much? You know what I mean? But it's, it's, that's when that mental part of the game, how composed can you be? Mm. Breathing techniques can probably help with that. You know what I mean? A lot of people are jumping in that cold water, doing that deep breathing. You know? <laughs> oh, or that my cryotherapy. Dog, oh, my know? dog Cruz, he does an ice bath, what, damn near every every day, you know? I've done those ice baths, bro. The ones where you have to break the ice and then dip in there, boom, and then just that, that Wim Hof breathing, just, uh, bro, it's it's wild, man. Like, it's, I really feel like I'm on another, like, fuck marijuana, bro. <laughs> Off of your own breath, you can get high. Oh, my God. He's like, bro, uh, you don't see Cruz right now, but he's saying it's facts, it's facts, it's facts. Yeah, no, because we're connected ethereally. There you go. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, and so are you saying that you're not really partaking in weight cutting anymore? Are you just fighting at the weight that you're at? Yeah, it's in, now lately it's just been welterweight. Right. You know what I mean? I'm walking around 180, 178 mm. every day, putting and eating, like eating and fasting and training and having great 
great um, output in the gym, you know, feeling good positively, like in my mind sometimes. In them, okay, but not all the time. Sometimes, you know, but there's sometimes I had that. Like I, I was just hearing, you know, um, Span. I don't know the guy that just fought yeah. last night talk about like his depression and shit. And when he was talking, dude, I know he lost his fight pretty bad, but at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Like I felt that what he was saying, you know what I mean? Like he, what he was talking about, like how you have to fight through sometimes like the mental struggle, the, the depression and shit, mm. you know? And the fact that he sought for help, you know what I mean? It's just only going to make you better, bro. So if he's hearing this, you know, interview, just keep your head up, bro. I know you lost last night, but it don't mean nothing, man. Just keep fighting. You know, I had three L's in a row and you're in the highest stage ever. Be thankful and just keep moving forward. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Um, what do you feel is the current state of MMA as a whole? Uh, and furthermore, on the topic of mental health, how do you feel that it's being uh, accepted or spoken about in the world of MMA? Bro, I was looking at your lips move, man, and I was just like hypnotized, sorry. No, that was beautiful, your, man. Your, your voice is like super captivating. Oh, thank you, man. I forgot about the words. I dude. appreciate that. I appreciate it. No. Say it again. What, what, what do you feel? Um, what do you feel is the current state of MMA? And also, how do you think that uh mental health has kind of played a role in MMA? Do you think that it's uh more talked about now than it was maybe ten years ago? Um, talk to us about that. I think it's coming out now. I think it's always been talked about. I think people have been going through this since the gladiator days. It's just like now it's being like, you know, um, exploited. You know, people are like putting itself out there. I remember I heard the Ken Shamrock version of his yes. life. That was, I cried, bro. I was like, <sighs> fuck, man, that, that was me. I lived through like maybe a few percent of that. <laughs> Damn. But, um, but like, I understand him, dude. And I feel like even the Olympics with this girl, like, you know, putting her mental health first and all that stuff, like all that stuff is, and the football players back in the day doing the whole thing with their, with the CT, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? like, all that stuff is coming out now. And I think that's super important. It's super beneficial for, um, for the sport in general, because that's a huge part of the game is your mental health. Mm. Yeah. You, the guy looks great. The guy's super strong. The guy has a fucking physique of a Greek God, bro. Right. But this guy is fucking, you know, mentally... Handicapped. Like, handicapped, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Like, if, you know, you see the, the first time he sees a punch is because maybe his dad punched him or something and right. in a certain way he fucking flinches. Like, the way a dog would when you spank a dog. Right. You know what I mean? They'll remember, like, you know, now you, anytime you raise your hand, they recognize that and they, even though it could be a big, dangerous dog. Right. Right? They're gonna, they're, now they're, they're already um, conditioned to be fearing you. Mm. Wow. Uh, Jose, kind of uh, on a completely different topic, what are, outside of fighting, outside of, you know, MMA and, and training and all that, what are your joys? What are some of your hobbies that have little to do with MMA? Hmm. Some of my hobbies are playing guitar. Okay. You know, I play guitar for myself. I like to play, you know, chord progressions and sing and I like to make up songs, you know, about angels, about death, about life, about love, you know, for myself. And I show it to my wife. I, I show it to my kid. And I just like, you know, just hopefully. And I want their feedback. I'll show it to my brother. You know what I mean? I just want their feedback. Right. And just to see if I got any better. You know, that's one of my hobbies, to see if I can get better at singing and play guitar. That's dope, man. You know, um, another one of my hobbies is just... I'm starting to realize it now. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, but it's like, you know, raising my kid, you know, being a parent, mm. being a, being like a, like not only an educator, a teacher and a watcher is just, and a friend to like, you know, somebody that I made. Wow. And just doing that. And on top of that, like giving her access to not like, you know, to all of, all of my family and me, meaning right. that like, you know, I could I could have made a decision and moved away from my family from Miami, but I decided to like buy my house in front of my mom's house so that my daughter can have a relationship with a grandma like I never had. Wow. I never really had a relationship with any of my grandmas or my grandpas, like the way my daughter has it now. So I feel right. like I kind of like kind of broke the cycle and yeah. just like making it happen better for her future generations. Wow. I mean, that I'm not going to be able to, like, you know, sit under the shade and I'm just going to be able to just, you know, just know that I, you know, was willing to die for all of this. Right. Wow. That's but I just try beautiful. to live every day. Every day, I'm always 
looking for life and preserving life. Mm, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, every single week, you know what I'm talking about. We have three. I said three segments. And the last one is actually called the Qua Qua Quest for the Truth. You know what I'm talking about. And in this beautiful segment, we pick a random emphasis on the word random card from this here deck of cards. And we get to ask the illustrious guest before us this here random question. So here we go all right oh the first one is actually a pretty good one all right <clears throat> jose what career advice would you give to your 16 year old self yes okay <laughs> man you know why are we bro we're having these crazy like i don't know man how to explain it what it is is but it's just I just got off of like talking to my coworkers about this that are much younger than me. You know, right now I'm, I'm currently working at um, TJ Maxx Home Goods. Okay. And I'm a coordinator now. Okay. You know, I got promoted and finally. Made Dang, a, respect. A, yeah, 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 yeah. Congrats. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And um, now I'm like a, a trainer. You know what I mean? I was the lowest dude in there. I'm 34 years old and I'm working there and I was a dude that was cutting boxes. You know, throwing out trash to the right. dude that basically started moving up in different parts of the um, the company where it was like now I'm processing the line, I'm unloading the truck, I'm processing, um, you know, individual big ticket items. And now to the point where like, you know, now I'm out on the floor and I'm, you know, handling like selling these items, you know, what I mean, oh, you know, yeah. like because I've throughout since I was 16 till now, you know, what I mean, I've, I haven't stopped working you know, I mean, from all kinds of jobs. So I have a ton of experience now. Right. So I was talking to these kids, you know what I mean? And I say kids because they're like 17, 18, 19, maybe 20, 22 years right. old. And the, you mean like, even though you're 22 years old, they might think they're a man, but they're still a kid because I can see the way they work. Right. And the way they're working is kind of like, I don't know what's going on with today's workforce, bro, but they're pussified. Bro. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it is the scariest thing of like why everybody's only talking about when they're going to take their next break. You know what I mean? On top of that, like they're huddling up, you know what I mean? And fucking... You know, just trying to like, you know, do the work, like basically like together and less efficient, you know what I mean? Making right. more. And I'm just there and then, you know, avoiding customers and things like that. So when I'm watching all this shit happen, I'm just like, nah, man, like I remember being like that, but like we're in a time, maybe because they don't have kids, maybe they don't have a house or a car and things right. they got to pay for and shit. Maybe they're not there yet. They just live at home and they just want to make a paycheck and it's to them it's like a high school it's like they want to hide in the fucking cut right and i mean and just fucking collect hours and shit and it's like first of all you guys are we're all doing the same thing we're, we're all exchanging time for money right. so like when you're here why don't you guys try to make the most of your time and be like the best that you can be but like that attitude is slowly dying these days because of yeah. all this trap music and all this crazy yeah. weakness that's being spread throughout the media and um it's like they they say so this girl was like you got promoted to coordinator how did you get promoted so fast and i was just like i'm like maybe i got paid because i was 34 years old and you know i have all these responsibilities and they want to help me out but at the end of the day it's like they think i'm doing something special or different that they cannot do right you know what i mean and this is the advice i wouldn't want to give like my 16 year old me like whatever miracle or whatever fucking great thing you see somebody else doing Bro, just know that you got the same potential, the same miracle capacity as that person. Mm. No different. Like, if that's all, if I could say something like that, because I can get specifics on so many things, you know what I mean? Like, right. But like something simple, like almost like a vague poem, you know what I mean? Like, so that this person can like, you know, use that, this like outline to basically, you know, go, go through life with and be like, all right, oh, at this moment, like you're going through a situation all of a sudden be like, okay, but. This guy's doing this. Should you would you lose jealousy? You would lose like the ego a little bit. You know what I mean? You won't ego trip as much. You'd be like, oh, I can do that too. And then treat others like the way you want to be treated, bro. Like straight up, like if you do that, you're gonna get far as fucking life. Mm. That's it. Wow. Treat others like the way you want to be treated. It's like so biblical, Jesus, you know, Christianity type of talk. But it also goes it goes even beyond that. Before that, as well with the Tao, right, and um, and other philosophies and. In India, and you know, I can't go get into those kind of specifics. There's just so much information, but um, right. that's what that's where that's where I would give that's what I would give to myself. You know what I mean? Like, 
treat other people like the way you want to be treated because then you'll you'll never fuck nobody over mm. and you'll have a, a type of integrity that everybody can trust and everybody would want you know which i i have now today you know it's not that it's not that and on top of that it's never too late and that's like the last advice mm. it's never too late it's never it's never too late those are the three things i would probably say in like one sentence wow yeah wow that'd be an impactful meeting for sure um Cruz, you got anything as far as like what? Question? Yeah, yeah. What would you tell your 16 year old self? Which, let's be honest, is not that far away from now. <laughs> Invest in uh, Etsy. Bro, you could have made so much money, bro. <laughs> you clown. Yeah. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. That's solid. That's solid. Invest that's, in Etsy. That's, that was I mean, some I, truthful talk right I there. mean, you could have said Bitcoin, but yeah. Etsy, Etsy, that's, yeah. That's, yeah, it's too predictable. No, I, I understand. I understand. Um, Jose, I, I want to know, at what point does it get real as far as like fighting? You know, is it, uh, is it the night before the fight? Is it the week before the fight? Is it when you're, uh, when they're coming to check your raps? When, at what point does shit get real for you? When I see my opponent at the at the face offs or at the fight. When I first see my opponent, when I see his physical body there, that's how I know shit's real. Mm. Because now I know he's not sick. Now I know he's not injured. I know he's ready to do what he contracted to do, which mm. is to try to hurt me. Um. You you mentioned uh, them being sick, you know, them uh, yada, 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 this and this and that. Um, open up a little bit just for the camera. Um, th is that a, a regular occurrence for you that, uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll train your ass off getting ready for a fight and then, oh, uh, you know, I pulled my hamstring, you know, I, this happened, blah, blah, blah. I'm pulling out. Is it a regular thing or not really? I think it happened to me one time. Okay, talk to us. The dude had a bad weight cut and said he couldn't fight because he was feeling like shit. And it wasn't, I didn't feel bad about it. it didn't Were you mad? No. No, man. Why am I going to get mad? Well, some people will say that they're super heated because they put X amount of work into this and then you just. Man, I maybe because in my second fight, I saw this guy cut weight really bad and had to get hospitalized and his stomach oh, pumped and shit. So shit. I, was like, I was like, I'm like, I know how hard weight cutting is. God damn. You know what I mean? And when the guy couldn't make weight, I just understood. I'm not going to get mad. I did my part of the job. Right. You know what I mean, like shit, I made the weight. I mean, that's already half of the fight. Right. In a sense. You know what I mean? Like I was just to give people like a way to gauge it, but it's a fight in itself just to fucking lose the weight, to lose the fear and to win the fight mm -hmm. you know? and to actually fight and win, you know? So to me, I like I understood. I'm like the dude looked. You know what I mean, like the dude looked like he was, he was having a hard time cutting weights. You know what I mean? It's you're bad, dude. You know what yeah. I mean, like you signed the contract. I still get half the pay. Right. And I bounce. It happened to my brother. It happens to everyone. You can't get mad. Mm. Why are you gonna let other external entities have that much power over you? Damn. The the ability that you have to be able to uh, control that and not let, like you said, an outside entity um influence uh your emotion how long did that take for you to master you know i can say recently just recently not i'm not, i'm still not mastering it either like i'm just i'm on my way to mastery you know what i mean it may happen when i'm 65 who knows mm. but um social media man is definitely speeding up you know human humanity's consciousness at another level with all if you're following the right pages and listening to the right things like or let's say not the right things, particular things, you know, so that way you can be able to, you know, unchain your mind and just be able to like, you know, think outside of the box and see the box for what it really is. You mentioned uh, mastery at 65. Recently, uh, Anderson Silva fought uh, Tito in a boxing match and knocked him out. Shout out Anderson Silva. Um, 
phenomenal, but on the same card, Evander Holyfield fought as well, and it didn't uh, against Vitor Belfort, if I'm not mistaken. And I mean, everybody's saying he should have never been in there in the first place. What are your two cents on these uh, build? You know, these 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 fights that are built with you know classic uh, superstars of the game of the MMA community, um, but. Some would argue a little bit past their prime. What are your two cents on that? For me, you can do whatever you want for as long as your mind allows you to. So, and if your spirit is about that, you know what I mean? Like, I have nothing against old people getting in there fighting it, Dang. fighting it out. Dang. No, there's Hell nothing. Yeah. You don't feel bad about it at all. Hell yeah. I don't care. Holyfield signed on the dotted line, knew what it was about. Right. And went against a younger, stronger fighter. Right. That freaking. But the fact that, but don't tell me, don't, you can't say that, you know, Holyfield's training camp wasn't good. It was probably the best camp ever. On right. top of that, like, that's the best shape that he's ever been in. Right. In a while. And on top of that, to perform at that shape. Right. You know what I mean? At his age, was still another feat on its own. It's a victory that can go, that can go on the record books for himself, you know, forever. Right, right, right. And Vito Belfort, yeah, made the history and beat Evander Holyfield, but the real ones know how impressive, yeah. what really, what would really impress us. 100%. And, and, and it would be the Jake Paul and Victor Belfort fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I mean, Tyson did it recently against uh, Roy Jones Jr., and he looked fucking phenomenal. I mean, it was out of this world. It was out of this world. Uh, what do you think about this whole uh, Jake Paul, the whole, uh, these fights happening? What do you think about. Uh, him kind of trolling the MMA community as a whole. Uh, ben Askren going in, then Tyron Woodley going in. Talk to us about the the circus. Man, the circus, right? Right, yeah. right, exactly. Can we play some Tool right now? <laughs> <laughs> Let's play some Enema right now. Yo, no, oh, yeah, man. this is um circus side show shit, shit, shit show. Um, but um, at the same time, it's amazing. Fuck yeah. I think it's great. I think it's amazing. Maz Vidal, Tyrone Woodley, um, everybody that's in on it, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, Holyfield, all these people, all the, the thriller thing, this whole thing. Yeah. Because it's it's another, it's like another um another outlet. Mm. It draws in it draws a lot of people. People right. that would have never saw mixed martial arts. Right. If it wasn't for somebody that these and I am not sorry, herbs. And simpletons. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are soft. <laughs> oh my god. You know what I mean? They follow they follow like these um like YouTube stars and music stars and all these other people. It's fine. Right. It's fine. They can listen I mean and they're they draw a crowd. And on top of that, it's like it's like watching WWE with some reality in it. Because mm. those guys are really going to bang. Mm. I mean, there's going to really be a finish. You know, two men enter, one man walks out. Mm. That shit's hard, bro. Yep. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be scared to sign one of those fucking contracts. That shit's a fucking, like you said, a circus, bro. Right. Magic happens there. Yep, 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 yep. Shit. 100%, 100%. Uh, Jose, before we start uh, wrapping up, I do want to get into one, uh, one more topic, which is... Uh, the role of THC or cannabis in the MMA community, how it's evolved from, you know, uh, 10 years till now, uh, USADA's uh, admittance of it, it pretty much being okay as far as like, coming up on a test or as long as it's not right before a fight. Talk to us about how everything has evolved in that aspect. Well, so far through the ev evolution right now, where we're at with it, about fucking time. Dang. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and on top of that, it's like, I just feel bad for anybody that's got in trouble for it. You know, I feel terrible the fact that there's people in jail for it still. You know what I mean? Like, and now people, are, and it's so, such a hypocrisy where there's people, you know what I mean? Like, getting fucked up over this, you know, and getting negative feedback because of this thing that was like, this stigma that was created about cannabis. Um, I love, I love marijuana. Mm. I'm not going to lie. That, there's no point of lying here and to try to like you know impress anybody I don't give a fuck about any of y'all mm. <laughs> alright fuck all y'all <laughs> but um yeah I've been smoking since I was like literally 13 years old okay and I haven't stopped mm. I'm 34 now 
you know, it started off as something to do because it was just to help me be cool with my friends to the point where it's like, and I like experiencing this mindset. And then to the point where it's like, you know, I like the fact that this is like the lubrication to help me get to who I am already. Mm. Very cool. You know, do you do you think that it, it aids you in any way during your training or uh, recovery more than anything? I mean, at this point in my life, the way I use it, it's 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 just um, it's ritualistic now. It's just something I do because it's like if I don't do it, doesn't it doesn't feel like I am complete. It's almost it's almost like can you say um, what is that word when you're compulsive obsessive mm, gotcha. <laughs> but um does it benefit me i don't like to say it. no i don't think weed benefits me in mixed martial arts in any way i don't think it doesn't i don't think it does anything bad to me either okay i don't think it has it doesn't have to do anything with i feel like marijuana has just to do with just life mm. whether you're doing martial arts or whether you're working you can just smoke weed and just live your life. Mm. It doesn't have to be related with sports. It doesn't have to be related with food. It doesn't have to be related with weight loss. It doesn't have to be related with none of that shit because weed didn't come with that. True. Weed was just a fucking plant that grew off the fucking ground. True. Somebody just fucking smoked it. And then somebody was like, yeah, this makes me smarter. So I'm smart. <laughs> I'm, so I'm so strong. I'm, I'm faster. My lungs, they last longer. And it's like, we don't know if weed does any of that. <laughs> we just like to say it does. But at the end of the day, we really, we really don't know. There's so much that goes on in the unseen that is so unexplained. The fact that we can think that we can label and we have the audacity to label shit and say what shit is. I mean, it just sickens me when we don't know shit. Right. We really don't know shit, bro. Right, right, right. We experimented. We know this shit works. That doesn't work. This shit is good. This shit is bad. And then the fact that, like, you know, it became, like, indoctrination and law just... Like, just make weed legal again, Lord. Please. Mm. Just, how, how long you give it till, till Florida gets on the bandwagon as far as uh, recreational? There's just so much money right now. You know what I mean? In all those, like, you know, drug re rehabilitating clinics where people are just using any kind of excuse. And marijuana being one of the, you know, scheduled one drug. You know, you can just basically vacation here in Florida, <laughs> you know, using your insurance card to fucking get better and, and weaned off of marijuana using Suboxone. Oh my God. <laughs> insane. Insane. And that's, and you know what I'm saying? That's a whole other topic for a whole yeah, other yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole other hour and a half ready to go right there. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what an episode of colossal proportions we have had today. Can we please give it up for our guest today in the studio, Jose Caceres! <laughs> Brother, thank you so much for dropping on by. We cannot thank you enough. Um, you know, the honor, it, it was an absolute honor honor and an absolute blast um you know having you on today we cannot wait till we get the chance to do it again um before we start wrapping up um what's in the horizon is there a fight in the works is there uh what's in the works talk to us about what's in the horizon yeah i have a fight coming up in x mma boom october 23rd boom against demarcus jackson okay 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 talk to us about that how are you how's the mental preparation for that coming along are you even are you in that mind space yet or, or not even yet no i'm there okay yeah i'm ready to die dang dang i'm ready to die so it's i'm cynical about this mm. you know it's just I've been doing this for so long that I'm just, to me, it's just, I'm a, like the way, I can only just say what my daughter would say. I'm a, I'm a strong clown. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's beautiful. Oh man. Um, that's, that's, that's phenomenal. Um, if there's a poster, you see it on the screen already. You know what I'm talking about? Um, please tune in to that fight. Cop. Tickets? Is there an audience? I'm, I'm presuming there's an audience. Yeah, I think it's gonna be at the Watts Co Center in uh, Miami, Florida. Okay, very cool. So, very cool. Yeah, I'm gonna be having tickets. I'm gonna, you know, 
I'm gonna be selling to. I'm gonna be sold out by the time I touch him. Facts, 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 facts. You see the man's uh, Instagram on the screen. Please hit him with a follow, so you know when those tickets are up for sale. You know when the man's fighting. You know all that good stuff. Um, Jose. Lastly, before we wrap up, um, last question of the evening. I do want to ask. Um, I'm gonna hit you with. Okay, because there was a similar question that I normally wrap up with earlier, so I'm going to hit you with an alternative. Um, where do you see Where do you see yourself in the next 5, 10 years? What's going on? I already won the UFC championship welterweight belt. Okay. And um, I probably already opened up my own gym. Okay. And I have a great pro kids program, you know, teens program and adult program. And also, you know, I would have different, you know, multiple sources of income through real estate and um, other small business ideas that me and my wife are going to create. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Those are clear objectives that you can focus on. And, and the fact that, that you have that clarity, man, I, I commend you for that. I truly, truly do. I truly, truly do. Thank you, brother. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, every Thursday at midnight, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? You go on YouTube. Yeah, you can go on Spotify. You can go on Apple uh, Podcasts, on Deezer, on iHeartRadio. Uh, bro, you can send me a damn uh, DM. I'll get you a damn cassette. But more than anything, you got to go on YouTube because that's how you get all the visuals. You know what I'm saying? That's how you get all... We got like 72 angles in here. That's how you get to see them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, every Thursday at midnight, make sure uh, go on Instagram. Hit the link in the bio. Subscribe. Subscribe on the YouTube, subscribe on the Instagram, all that good stuff. Hit my main man's page uh, on Instagram. Um, what is it? I mean, they see it on the screen, but just so, I mean, you so, so you can tell them, what is it? At Florida Man underscore 72nd Street. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Is that? Just abbreviate the street. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, you see it on the screen. Is that the only social media? Is there anything else? Yeah, yeah, that's the only one I use. Okay, cool, cool. So if you see anything else, bro, that's a fake person right there. You know, <laughs> that's an impersonator, uh, an imposter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Cruz, what you got for the people before we wrap up? Nothing, chilling, chilling, chilling. Thank you, though, bro. Uh, cool episode. Thank you. Thank you. The man is a cameraman extraordinary. He kept the cameras on, and I appreciate that. Emotionally, what is it? Exhausted? Yeah. Okay, that's beautiful. That's fashion. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, every Thursday at midnight, you know what it is. Holla. What you can talk about anything. And it don't matter what the world thinks. You can say how you feel on midnight in Miami. Well, you can push it to the limit. It gets real with only one and ill. Get locked into it.